Um, so after the chest trauma, we will have the Q&A session. So you have plenty of time to ask uh, regarding anything. Okay, uh, without any further delays, I welcome Dr. Nabila to give her talk. Hi, Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. So I was given a task to talk about regional anesthesia for chest trauma. So I will only emphasize on two blocks, which is the serratus anterior plane block and also a rectus spinal plane block. This would be the outline of my presentation today. So let's start off with the first block first. The serratus anterior plane block uh, was introduced uh, by Lanku in 2013. Initially, it was introduced uh, to give analgesia for breast surgery, but then because of uh, the spread of the block, they noticed that it's also good for rib fracture. So, to know more about it, we have to have at least a basic understanding about the chest wall innovation. So we know that the spinal cord uh, divide into the dorsal rami and also the ventral rami. The ventral rami travel along the chest, becoming the lateral cutaneous branch here, which branch off at the mid axillary line, divided into the posterior division and also the anterior division. And the intercostal nerve, which is the ventral rami, we travel anteriorly towards in front before giving off a anterior cutaneous branch. So for this serratus anterior plane block, the aim of the block is here. This is the plane that we are giving the block at. So primarily, only block the lateral cutaneous branch. So the spread of the block is like this, sparing the dorsal rami and also the anterior cutaneous branch. So by knowing how does it spread, it helps us uh, to know what kind of cases uh, that's suitable for the serratus anterior plane block. So this is the anatomically how does it spread. So we can see that anterior portion, it only spread until the axillary part and also a bit of the chest and behind. So this is how the patient should be placed on uh, during the serratus anterior plane block. Operator, patients, and the ultrasound machine should be in a straight line. And patients is in a supine position. The head can be elevated a bit so that patients can be less uh, in a respiratory distress. The probe is placed at the axilla region. Or more specifically, we place the probe transversely at the mid axillary line and scan posteriorly until the until we see this kind of a sono anatomy. So the sono anatomy that we are looking at is the latissimus dorsi, the serratus anterior, the ribs. Most likely this is the fifth ribs correspond to the uh, nipple level and also the pleura, which we can see uh, sliding on top. So for the needling part, well, the length of the needle is depend on the scalp scan basically. For this patient, the depth is only around 2.7, uh, 2.5 centimeter maybe. So the needle length maybe should be less than 50 millimeter. But if you have a bigger size of patient, you can get a longer needle. So we insert the needle in plain manner, aiming towards the ribs in order to avoid any kind of pleural structure puncture, and then deposit the LA on top of the rib. This is uh, the deep uh, SFP block. We can also place our LA superficially, meaning that we're aiming our needle superficial to the serratus anterior muscle and deposit our LA superficially. Okay. So how much should we use? Basically, this is a fascia plane block, so we aim for an adequate volume. The volume play is a bigger role here. So at least 30, uh, 20 to 40 mils are uh, indicated for this kind of blocks. And we would prefer for a long acting local anesthetic so that it can last at least for a day. And how about the concentration? We, we calculate first the maximum recommended dose for the patient. And then from there, we see how much is the volume that can uh, the patient accept. 
okay what are the complications from the selfless anterior plane block there's this one artery that we have to watch out for this block which is the thoracodosal artery it is between the latissimus dorsi and selfless anterior plane block so we have to make sure that our needle doesn't inject there in order to avoid any kind of hematoma or intraarterial injection other than that uh, the pneumothorax is the risk as well and infection now let's move on to erector spinal plane block. So erector spinal plane block basically was introduced in 2016. It is uh, started off as a treatment for a thoracic pain, like a, for a chronic pain kind of thing. But then we noticed that it is also useful for a surgery and also for a rib trauma. So where does we put our LA in this kind of block is deep to the uh, erector spinal muscle and also superficial to the traumatic process. So that is basically uh, the diagram show us where we block and basically because uh, putting LA there, the LA diffuse blocking the dorsal rami and also the ventral rami. And in addition, when we already uh, put the LA there, we can also block all the branches up until in front giving a sufficient block uh, hemito uh, hemitorax. So this is the spread of the block. As compared to the thoracic anterior plane block, it only block half of the anterior and posterior and also axillary part. Erector spinal plane block can confidently block at least two levels from the injection point. Hemitorax meaning that half of the chest wall. Okay. Patient can be put in uh, several positions for this block. This is the lateral uh, position. Uh, make sure that patient is comfortable and again of the operator, the patients and the ultrasound scan should be in a straight line. And then patient can be put in sitting position. Most of the time I think the uh, trauma patient will be more comfortable in a sitting position. Uh, less movement is needed for them. And then uh, if the patients are quite comfortable to put in prone, we can put them in prone. In terms of proning the patient, the patient uh, might feel a little bit uncomfortable, for, but for us, the operator, it is the most suitable uh, position because uh, it's easy for us to slide the probe lateral uh, up and down rather than uh, uh, against the gravity that we have to slide up and down. So for erector spinal plane block, the first thing that we need to know is that we need to palpate the spinous process here. And then slowly move uh, the probe a bit lateral, slowly, roughly maybe around two to three centimeters, we will get this kind of view. So this is what we are looking at. The transverse process here look like a square acoustic, uh, acoustic shadow. And then we have all these three important muscle layers here, the trapezius, rhomboid, and erector spinal muscle. And we can see the rhomboid muscle tapered off. And it usually ends at T5. So this most likely corresponds to the T4, and here would be correspond to the T5. So what kind of needle that we can use for this block? It also the same thing as the serratus anterior plane block. We have to see the depth of the scan. For this patient also, I think 50 millimeter is sufficient, but if we have a bigger size patient, 80 to 100, we might need to use a longer needle then. But let's say if we move the probe a bit more lateral, we might get this kind of view, which is not the optimum view because we are aiming for the transverse process, not the ribs. The ribs looks like more, more a rounded shape here, and we can see the pleura with the same kind of depth. So if we kind of like uh, get this kind of view, we just turn, we just slide the probe medially a bit to get back this view. And the needle is inserted in inclined manner as well, aiming towards the transverse process. Sometimes in, a, in order, some, some people like to hit the transverse process and then we draw a bit before injecting the LA. And then this is the LA spread that we are looking at. It should spread carefully and contently. Okay, and then we can see uh, a pumping effect, meaning that uh, when we inject the LA, the space will be opened up 
but when we didn't inject the LA, the space will uh, shrink back. And then that happened every time we keep uh, pumping in the LA. So this is also a facial flame block as well. So we need a large volume. The minimum volume is the 20 mils. This is, this is just a rough idea for us how much to give for erythroma. So this table is based on uh, 49 cases that was done by uh, Lutvik et al. They, see, uh, they give this kind of block uh, to a 49 patient and look at the pain score. So it can be divided into the unilateral and bilateral. So we can see that the most important part here is that we don't exceed the cut the maximum LA dose. And then uh, from there, we can just know that the minimum that we need to use is 20 mil. Okay. So the ESP block, the retro spinal flame block, is actually very uh, far away from the central structure. So very rare for us to have any kind of complications. But then again, when counseling patients, we still need to highlight this few of the complications that might happen to them. Okay, these are my references. So, what's next? Now we have to have a determination and start doing it. Keep the excitement ongoing. And then be patient. Don't get pointed with any kind of setbacks. And then, nevertheless, the patient's safety is our top priority. And lastly, practice, practice, and practice. With that, I thank you. Assalamualaikum and hi guys. Now, let's focus on how to perform serratus plan block. There are two types of serratus plan block, superficial and deep. In this video, we will show you how to perform deep serratus plan block. This block can be performed with the patient in lateral or supine position. It is performed in the axillary region and a more lateral and posterior location than the PEX1 and 2 blocks. High frequency linear transducer is typically used for this block. Two main methods in identifying the plan for the serratus plan block. The first method requires counting the ribs from the clavicle while moving the transducer laterally and distally until the fourth and fifth ribs are identified. The transducer is orientated in the coronal plane and then tilted posturally until the latimus doci is identified. As for the second method, which we use in this video, the transducer is placed across the axilla where the latimus doci appears more lateral. The location of the thoracodosal artery is easier to identify this way. After patient is cleaned and draped, transducer is placed using the second method. The two main anatomy landmarks need to be identified are the latimus dorsi and serratus anterior muscle. The thoracodosal artery runs in the facial plane between these two muscles. The ribs, pleura, and intercostal muscles can also be seen during the procedure. Now, we move to the interesting part, the needling. We are using Stimuplex Ultra 360 80mm needle in plane anterior to posterior approach. The needle now is in this anterior, serratus anterior muscle just above the rib. Note that if you want to perform superficial serratus plan block, the tip of our needle should be in between the latimus dorsi and serratus anterior muscle. Once we feel a pop, aspirate to make sure there is no blood, then we can inject our LA. For the sonar anatomy, that we are looking for is the latimus dorsi and the serratus anterior muscle. The serratus muscle is identified as a thick, 
hyper echoic muscle deep to the latimus loci and is imaged over the ribs. Ribs can be identified as a rounded shape, hyper echoic rim with hypo echoic shadow beneath it. Pleura can be identified as a line with shimmering appearance. We inject ropivacaine 0.2% 20 ml in the plane. We can see the serratus plane has been lifted up. Just to remind again, this is an interfacial plane block. Volume is more important than the concentration. At least 20 ml of LA need to be deposited in the plane. For chest trauma, this block produces analgesia for the hemithorax anterior and laterally. For posterior refracture, it is advisable to perform ESP rather than serratus plan block. Serratus plan block also can be used as analgesia for upper abdominal dermatomes. We need to perform this block at the more distal ribs to produce such effects. So, here we can see the spread of our LA along the plane. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Now, we are going to show you how to perform erector spinal plane block. The ESP block is relatively new interfacial block technique introduced in 2016 by Ferrero et al. The aim of the block is to get the spread of LA in the potential space in between the erector spinae muscles and transverse process, which is near the costal transverse foramen. This will result in spread of LA longitudinally to the ventral and dorsal rami of the spinal nerve. This block can be performed with the patient in sitting position, lateral decubitus, or prone. In this video, the patient is in sitting position with her back towards the operator. Note that the ultrasound machine is placed on the opposite side in front of the patient. This is to create an ergonomic environment for the performance of this block. High frequency linear transducer is typically used for this block. To identify thoracic level, we can use anatomical bony landmarks. Spine of scapula corresponds to T3, an inferior angle of scapula corresponds to T7. We can also determine the vertebral level by doing rib count scanning. The sonor anatomy we are looking for, the three layers of muscles and at the upper back, trapezius rhomboid and erector spinae lying on the top of transverse process. Note that rhomboid muscles end at T5 level. This is another way of confirming the correct level of target for this block. You need to differentiate ribs and transverse process. Rib is more rounded shape and transverse process is square shape. After thoracic level is identified, the transducer is placed in paramedian sagittal orientations looking for the tip of transverse process of that level. Now, we are going to inject our needle using Stimuplex Ultra 360 100mm implant cephalate to cowded approach. Our needle is now at the erector spinae muscles reaching to the ESP. Once we feel a pop, we are convinced that the tip of the needle is in the plane. Aspirate and make sure there is no blood and clear. We inject ropivacaine 0.2% at least 20 ml and we aspirate every each ml of LA given. Once we inject the LA, the plane will expand and collapse after we finish injecting. This is what we call as pumping effect. This block is quite safe compared to paravertebral block as the pleura is far away from the plane. 
risk of pneumothorax is minimal. You also can advance your needle until you reach the tip of transverse process and then we draw by 1 to 2 mm to ensure you are in the correct plane. This block produces multi-dermatomal analgesia for the trunk, anterior, lateral, and posterior. From previous study and case reports, coverage of 4 to 5 dermatomal level up and down, the level of injection is usually produced with 20 to 30 ml of LA, although the spread can be variable. This is to show you the spread of LA. Next, we want to check the spread of our LA. Move the transducer carefully until the spread ends and then move caudally. Thank you.